。我自信昨天讲了那个不是读书。Yesterday we've talked about、uh, the training in generosity. Today we'll talk about training in discipline. The verse states, "Lacking discipline, one will not accomplish one's own benefit, and so the wish to accomplish the benefit of others will be laughable." Therefore, it is the practice of the bodhisattvas to observe discipline, free of any mundane ambitions. If, when not keeping one's Avowed discipline, completely pure. One is not only unable to accomplish the higher realms for one's own benefit, but is, in fact, the way on the way to lower realms. Then the wish to accomplish perfect enlightenment for the benefit of others is indeed a laughable one. Just like the practice of generosity, in fact, the training of discipline has to be、uh, in a step-by-step format as well,、uh, or following that particular fashion. Without discipline. Then you will not be able to accomplish anything. Ponsu Grimbuche, for example, he has such a pure discipline. Though some of his disciples, since this is the dark age,、um, do not keep their pure discipline, but majority of great practitioners and great masters would pay attention to pure discipline. In such a way, their merit would further in. Increase day by day. This is really important. One must not be involved with the pursuing with pursuing the support of a rebirth in the higher realms, divine or human, because of attachment to existence or because of mundane craving. Carefully observing the three types of discipline,、uh, just recently I've given you the discipline, the three disciplines or the three types of disciplines that Pantsukar Bhutche composed. Uh, with a mind focused on accomplishing perfect enlightenment for the benefit of others, is the manner of practice whereby all bodhisattvas train in the parameet of discipline. Furthermore, from precious garland of the middle way, discipline is the act of benefiting others. The way of the bodhisattva states the achievement of mind of renunciation is is plain. As the parameter of discipline, the essence of discipline is an attitude of renunciation that turns the mind away from harming others. Along with the basis for that, the pledge to refrain from all the inherent and ethical and unwholesomeness of whatever kind is the first of the three types of discipline: the discipline of resolve. To give rise to virtuous qualities such as the six parameters that have not yet arisen in one stream of being, and to prevent those that have already arisen from diminishing and instead increasing, further is the second type, the discipline of gathering virtuous qualities. This is the the one that is、uh, mostly related to. To bodhisattva, the the vows of bodhisattva, to accomplish through any suitable means, free from impropriety, the benefit of all sentient beings in this and future lives is the third type, the discipline that acts for the welfare of sentient beings. This is mainly the third level or third group of vows, the Madhyana vows. When the essence of discipline is posited as renunciation. It is in terms of the discipline of resolve. This is mainly concerned with giving up all natural wrongdoing. Again, this means primarily giving up the ten non-virtues. Therefore, one must correct correctly discipline oneself so that one does not stray even on the level of intention. Now, this time that we study this particular teaching, especially on the、um, wish fulfilling. In treasury, we definitely had this feeling that the merit of human beings are decreasing. This is very much related to our deeds of the non-virtues. 
Back in 2011, I've given teachings at the normal university in Beijing. They really want to study what the ten virtues are. Uh, also, when I was giving teachings on the questions required, uh, requested, uh, on the sutra requested by the Naga King, uh, I think back in 2016, I've also given teachings on the ten virtues. If Atisha, the venerable Atisha, can be renowned as uh, the guru that uh, mainly gives a, a refuge vow and mainly gives the teachings on uh, aspiration. And uh, I think all of you, if you were to only give teachings on the Ten Virtues, it is uh, still quite a noble, um, a very noble way of propagating the Dharma teachings because wherever you are, whichever country you are at, the Ten Virtues are indeed are extremely important. The education on becoming a good person is extremely important. Not only is it important to be a good practitioner, it is important to the world as well. And then the ident identification of all the trainings in the bodhicitta of aspiration and of application, as well as the root and the branch downfalls, will not be elaborated upon this text, because if we were to talk about the faults of uh, the um, breaking of the vows and the merits of upholding precepts, uh, when it comes to how it is taught in the Bodhisattva vow tradition or in the Vajrayana vow tradition and so on, then that would be a lot to talk about. So over here he said that uh, it is uh, not going to be elaborated over here. Concerning the faults of degenerated discipline, the following is said in the Prajna Pramita Sutra, when due to a corrupted discipline, one is unable to accomplish even one's own benefit, what is left to say about benefiting others. The full ripening of, debase, of the debased discipline is the, the realm of hell beings or animals or the realm of the Lord of Death which is another term to describe the hungry ghost. And the Paramita Compendium states, if when allowing one's discipline to degenerate, one cannot accomplish one's own benefit, from where will the power to benefit others then come? There are many statements similar to this. As for the advantage of observing discipline, letter to a friend states, just as the earth is the basis for, an for the animate and inanimate, discipline is taught to be the basis for all good qualities. Concerning the root stands of free of any mundane ambitions. Uh, ornament of the sutras mentions the discipline free of craving for rebirth. Hence, it teaches how to practice the extraordinary discipline that it becomes the cause for liberation and omniscient wisdom. In the previous um, quotation, it says discipline from discipline that is free of craving for rebirth or craving for a higher rebirth. There are people who nowadays uh, taking discipline would wish for uh, becoming a more beautiful or more famed person in the next lifetime or become wealthy. And uh, we need to be very aware and be very careful for that kind of craving uh, for rebirth. Further from Lord Atisha, it brings splendor in this life and happiness in the next. So always observe all discipline purely. Also observe the discipline of seeking to accept and reject correctly the ground from which all qualities appear. The best kind of discipline is a mind at peace. If one's mind is at peace, in fact, the most supreme discipline is that the mind at peace. If the mind is at peace, then there would not be any afflictions. Without any afflictions, the discipline would naturally be pure. Without a pure mind, then our mind would naturally um, create uh, anger and sometimes greed, all kinds of things which would lead us to break us uh, to break our vows, to break our, our discipline. In this way, we would harm ourselves as well as the others. Then Gompawa also said the root of discipline comes down to following a spiritual friend. Potowa explained the basis for all excellent qualities is the discipline of resolve and the samayas. Therefore, if one is lacking discipline or if the samayas are not pure, that will become an obstacle to developing qualities and to all accomplishments. Without any 
any discipline, then people would not be interested in studying and、uh, practicing the Holy Dharma, and one would not have the interest to benefit the sentient beings. It is because the mind stream has already been tinted by the impure、um, defilements. In this way, your mind would not be able to abide. We often talk about the three studies, which is discipline,、uh, which is discipline,、um, meditation, and wisdom. So first of all, you need to have discipline so that you can have meditative absorption, and then wisdom can be developed. This is the this is the systematic systematic development of the three studies. And then more, it says that in order to keep discipline pure, one should not be attached to the pleasure of the three times. Karakpa said the cause for obtaining the human body of of freedom and riches is the precious training in discipline. Observe it in your being as much as you can, purely and without stains. Indeed, to obtain the human body, you need to keep、um, maybe. The、um, lay practitioner's vow or the eight precepts that you would practice occasionally. Without those kinds of precepts, then you would not be able to obtain a human body. So we would say that the merits of the ordained ones, since they would keep pure precepts, their merits are great. Even if you cannot be an ordained person in this lifetime, then. At least you should take the eight precepts on special holidays, or the five lay practitioners' precepts, or the three lay practitioners' precepts, or even a partial part of that、uh, precepts. That is so crucial. If you do not have the ground for even keeping one precept,、uh, then in your next lifetime you would not be able to be、uh, to be reborn as a human again.、Uh, you definitely would not be able to be reborn in the higher realms. Because this is the basis of being reborn in higher realms. Before giving the teaching of the、um, Manjushri teachings according to the Mah-、uh, to the Mahati tradition, Ponsu Guru Mache stated this very clearly. He said that if you want to attain a rebirth in the higher realms or a fruition in the,、uh, the rebirth of higher realms, you need to have the basis in the ground of discipline. I believe. I believe this is stated in the、um, memorandum of the preliminary practices by Kampongatron. For lay practitioners, I think the monastics need to give them more of the、um, discipline teachings or teachings on、um, the disciplines. Sometimes give them the vows, the three vows, the five vows, because those kinds of sannas, rather, those kinds of rituals are quite easy to conduct. Even without those, at least you can give them the vows to keep. Keep the eight precepts for a day or for a few times within a year,、um, even if within. Even if you cannot do that, in the teachings of discipline, it says that if you were to vow not to kill during the day, if you were to vow not to kill elephants or lions or large animals, or to vow not to kill、um, presidents of a country, if you were to have those kinds of inspirations, then that would generate、uh, great merit as well, because you have that mind of eradicating wrongdoings. But if you were to simply not commit in those wrongdoings, but not making those vows, you would not necessarily have those kinds of merits associated to that. So over here.、Um, You need to also understand if you have already committed to some wrongdoings, you need to try your very best to purify it by practicing confession and to mend it again and again. And then, according to Jayuwa, he said that fully observe the pure discipline, for it is the basis for the path to liberation and omniscience. And then Kamlumpa explained the following: When famine occurs, everything depends on barley. In the same way, since everything depends. On discipline, apply yourself to it. In the Dharma Center, if the practitioners really pay great attention to discipline, then the practice and the whole atmosphere would be completely different. If because that is because if the discipline is pure, then the mind would definitely be very settled. And if the mind is settled, then it will be easy for them to study and to contemplate. Lots of our Dharma teachers and some of the、um, monastics. 
Their precepts are really pure. They would not even violate any of the small um, disciplines, such as um, there are lots of our Sangha members that they would uh, not eat after noontime. And uh, we really rejoice to all of those who persisted in that practice for years. We think our Sangha member, uh, lots of them would practice the practice in the summer retreat and they would not eat over uh, noontime. Some of the lay practitioners, uh, they would practice greatly uh, on, days, uh, on special days such as the 8th, 15th, and 30th. They would uh, uphold the eight precepts. If we were to place great importance in discipline, then you would definitely be able to create a good atmosphere in the, um, in the Dharma Center. Otherwise, it would be very different if you were to laugh at people who actually would keep precepts and so on, then the power of propagating Dharma would be very different. So over here, he uh, particularly mentioned that at the times when there is a famine, then everything depends on Bardi, just like that in the time uh, as a practitioner, we need to place our attention on discipline, and on top of that, we need to uh, then um, practice and study and then contemplate and then propagate the Dharma. And in such a way, the power of propagating the Dharma would be completely different. And then he continued to say that also without reflecting on the effect of action, a pure discipline will not come about. Therefore, this reflection reflection is oral instruction. Sharawa said, one generally relies on the Dharma no matter what may happen. If one relies accur um, accurately on the teaching of the Vinaya, one won't need to add anything. One's heart will be pure, one's discernment stable, one will be delighted, and in the end, everything will be excellent. If one were to keep a pure precept, then uh, one would be happy, and if uh, one can keep a pure precept, then they would not have any suffering. Whereas people without pure precepts, then they would suffer and uh, they would not have any fruition from their practice. But uh, the ones that keep pre pure precepts uh, would be able to develop uh, further uh, um, insights on their practice. These statements, this statements teach that the root of all qualities is discipline, that for the purpose of keeping this discipline pure, one must rely on excellent friends, that one must give up a desire and reflect on the effects of karma, and that one must act in accordance with the Vinaya, accept and reject in a very meticulous way, and so forth. Furthermore, Gautam Tungme himself said, since discipline is the basis of all qualities, of forsake injury to others as though it were poison. Also, having realized that all trainings of the bliss gone ones are more precious than one's life, my through mindfulness and carefulness abide and establish others within a discipline that is unstained even for an instant by faults, downfalls, and defilements. Gyalsi Tokme himself practiced accordingly as well. <laughs> Chubum Zolin Jova Jurusha